council meeting. Um, before we move into our meeting agenda, we do have someone under citizens' comments, um, Elizabeth Coker. Ms. Coker here. I don't see her, Mayor. Okay. Then, um, since Ms. Coker is not here, then we will move on to our meeting agenda, and I will call this meeting to order. Tonight, our prayer is going to be done by Chaplain York, and I just saw Chaplain York. There you are. How are you? And our pledge is going to be done by Chief Bill Coverson from the Smyrna Fire Department. If you'll all stand with us, please. Let's pray. Our Father, we're so grateful for who you are, and we're thankful that you have been with our city. We thank you for protecting us the other night in the storms. We pray for all of the Middle Tennessee residents who have been affected. Thank you, Lord, for those who have volunteered to help. Father, we're reminded of the fact that in our community there's still a willingness to help a neighbor, and we're grateful for that. Pray you'll bless our leaders tonight here in Smyrna. May you give them wisdom as they make decisions. Bless all of our first responders, those who work in our city employment. And Father, we pray for our residents. Help us to, as a city, be a light to the community of all the glorious things that you have given us and provided for us and allow us to be stewards of. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you taste the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you, Chief. Ms. Diane, if you'll do roll call, please. Councilman Cole. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Morrell. Present. Councilwoman Peebles. Here. Councilman Coach. Short. Present. Councilman Sullivan. Present. Vice Mayor Atkins. Here. Mayor Reed. Here. Um, we will move on to item three, which is approval or corrections of the minutes of the February 11th, 2020 and February 27th, 2020 meetings. Are there any additions or corrections? Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Minutes pass. Um, Brian, any correspondence, communications, or awards and recognitions? None this evening, Mayor. Great. We'll move on to our consent agenda. Our consent agenda are items that are determined by our town manager to be routine. Um, I do always like to read the consent agenda, and if there's an item that a council member would like to pull off and um, speak to individually, we can do that. Um, we have quite a few items on the agenda, consent agenda tonight. First, we have approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Sessions Paving relative to the intersection improvements at Montgomery Way at Lee Road. Uh, item B, approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Air Gas USA LLC relative to the lease of gas cylinders, cylinders of oxygen, argon, and acetylene. For acetylene. acetylene. I thought I had it this time. For welding and torch cutting. Uh, item C is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Morton Building Incorporated relative to the addition to the park's equipment shed. Item D is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute contracts with Gadco Lawn Care uh, for park properties and Barton Lawn Care for park optional properties. Item E is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Betty Brin Children's Museum relative to the adventures of Mr. Potato Head exhibit. Item F is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Betty Brin Children's Museum relative to the Harley Davidson exhibit. Item G is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute addendum number two with Barge Solutions relative to the Construction Administration and Construction Engineering Services for the Nolan Drive Relocation Project. Item H is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a joint use agreement with Middle Tennessee Electric Membership Corporation relative to the ITRON meter reading system. Item I is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute an amendment to the Laverne Interlocal Agreement relative to adding sites for the gas AMI connected grid routers. 
Item J is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a professional services agreement with Larry Tolbert Esquire relative to the acquisition services for the Olive Branch Sewer Extension Project. Item K is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with MG Group PC relative to the hotel motel audit. Item L is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a contract with Agenda Quick Software relative to the agenda management for meetings. And item M is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute a renewal contract with Barton Lawn Care relative to the mowing of non-park properties. Is there any item a council member would like to pull off and discuss individually? I move to approve the consent agenda. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do I have a second? second? Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Consent, consent agenda passes. We'll now move on to old business. We only have three public hearings tonight. Our first one is consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 28E, group A, parcel 16.00, to go from R5 to PRD, as well as tax map 28E, group A, part of parcels 18.00 and 19.00, and tax map 28, partial 33.00, to go from R4 to PRD. It's requested by Joe Epps. The property contain approximately 21.95 acres and are located on Rock Springs Road and this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council. There have been no changes on this uh, as, since you uh, looked at this on first reading. Uh, this is a, a two, two parcels of land and parts of two others that are all being requested to be a part of the same uh, overall PRD uh, development. Uh, it is on west, uh, Rock Springs Road just west of the intersection with Highland Avenue. The land use plan will support commercial and medium density single family development here in this area. Surrounding zoning is a mix of R1, R3, R4, R6, and a PUD, which is the Stitcher's Playhouse. Uh, this PRD is a 169 unit townhouse development. Access would be from Rock Springs Road at two different locations. Uh, parcel 16 does have a house and several mobile homes that would be removed as a part of this development. <coughs> Uh, a significant portion of this parcel is affected by the 100 year floodplain, but the majority of that area is proposed to be left undeveloped. Uh, it did include the pattern book uh, that showed um, various details of the layout and buildings and, and all that that they are proposing to build. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval unanimously uh, with four conditions. Uh, one, to submit a traffic study in compliance with the zoning ordinance. Uh, the minimum square footage for the units is 1,400 square feet. Uh, utilities are required to be extended to the adjoining properties, and a fence is required as a part of the buffer between this development and the adjoining parcel to the west and a little bit to the north, uh, which is uh, map 28, parcel 31.01. Questions for Kevin on this? Kevin, on the... Um on the buffer, is that where it says R1? Is that where it's going to be at? Yes. Okay. Other questions for Kevin? Okay, this is a public hearing, so at this time we'll go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and go to the council for a motion. Move to approve. A motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our next public hearing is also a second reading and it's a consideration of an ordinance relative to the rezoning of properties located on tax map 54, parcels 14.01 and 14.02, containing approximately 19.47 acres. It's requested by Sean Collins to go from R3 to PRD. The properties are located on Morton Road, and again, this is a second reading. Kevin? Yes, Mayor and Council. Again, there are no changes since you looked at this on first reading. These are on, um, we're located on Morton Lane, about 900 feet west of the intersection with Jericho Street. Uh, land use plan would support uh, medium density, medium density single-family development in this area, and surrounding zoning is a mixture of R1, R3, and the CRD, uh, I'm sorry, Cedar Hills PRD in town, and uh, RM in Rutherford County. Uh, this proposed PRD is for a 38 lot, zero lot line development, so there will be two units per lot. Uh, there is also an existing single family residence which would remain, so there would be a total of 77 residences. 
uh, access would be from Morton Lane. Uh, again, did attach the pattern book that was submitted as a part of this request. Uh, the Planning Commission did review this, did recommend approval uh, with uh, five conditions. Uh, one, to submit a traffic study to ensure the proper site distance at the new entrance along Morton Lane. Uh, the development is required to comply with the Housing for Older Persons Act. The minimum front setback for corner lots is required to be 35 feet for both street frontages. Uh, provide additional examples of proposed housing ele elevations, and each unit will have at least two bedrooms on the first floor. Questions for Kevin on this? How much senior living do we actually have in this home? I don't know exactly. I've never added it up. Uh, we certainly have some, uh, primarily uh, rental, as far as what is geared directly to seniors. Um, we have some that have been approved that are under construction. We have some that have been approved that haven't been built yet. And so there's some others out there as well that, that is coming. Um, but again, it is primarily rental as what is as far as what is required or geared to be specifically for. There are certainly other developments that are uh, have been built that have been uh, quite a bit of retirees that have bought into and things of that nature because the housing design was worked for them, but it wasn't necessarily specifically spe or limited specific to. For it. Two, well, and yeah. I guess that's where I'm getting at with us being recognized by um, nationally as a great place to retire. I just don't think we have many options for seniors to choose from. So, um, questions or comments for Kevin? Did they say what the price range would be on this? I don't know. I don't know if that was in their packet of information. Uh, I'm trying to recall exactly what the square footage was as well because I don't recall the developers here might could answer that more directly. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, we anticipate between 280 and 350 price range and 1600 up square foot wise. It talks about there being an existing home that's going to remain. Where is, I, I realize it's not on that map but on ours is it uh, Right near the entrance there, there's a shade. It's, it's there actually, there. It's, in, it's back into the development. It's, I think it's shown up as lot, I think it's lot nine. Uh, if you go into the development, there's a kind of in this area here, right here. It shows, there's kind of two buildings on that, because I think one of them is a, a detached garage. Other questions or comments? Okay, this is a public hearing, so we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we will close this public hearing and go to the council for a motion. I move we approve. I have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Diane, would you show me is not voting or participating, please? Abstaining. Okay, we have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes with one abstention. Our last public hearing is also a second reading. It's a consideration of an ordinance relative to the amendment of the Town of Smyrna Municipal Code, Title II, Boards and Commissions, etc., Chapter 8, it's Mandatory okay. Attendance, Sections 8-0-101, Scope, and 8-102 Attendance. And Jeff, are we, you taking this one? Yes, Mary Council. As you know, we've discussed this. this uh, quite thoroughly. This would be an amendment to the Municipal Code that would uh, basically enact where the, uh, uh, upon a fourth absence by a board member on one of these boards, uh, their term would automatically be uh, extinguished. Okay. Questions for Jeff on this? Just so that I'm clear, we discussed at the last meeting and extending this to other boards. We're still just leaving it with the judicial quasi-judicial -ju boards, right? Yes. Yes, Council. And I think that we're going to see just how it goes for the next the year and see right. if we need to do it. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yes. Other questions for Jeff before we go to the public hearing? Okay. Um, at this time, we will go to the public to see if there's anyone here to speak for or against this item. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing and go to the Council for a motion. I move to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. 
we will move on to our new business, which is our Planning Commission report first, and we have a consideration of an ordinance relative to the annexation of 2,870 linear feet of the existing right-of-way of Rocky Fork Amable Road, and this is a first reading. Kevin? Yeah, this is a recommendation that staff made to the Planning Commission. Uh, as several parcels along Rocky Fork Amable Road were requested to be annexed, uh, they were annexed, but we did not uh, annex the road at that time because as they kind of came in piecemeal, uh, we were trying to avoid surrounding parcels uh, with the town limits that weren't being annexed. And since that has now, as things have happened, uh, that all the holes are filled in there. Um, we did uh, believe of, was, it, was it be a good idea for us to annex the road uh, there are several road improvements that are required as a part of the Cedar Hills development and the Derby Run development, which are would be accessing this road in this area. I uh, felt like it would be uh, beneficial to the town to be able to have that review of those improvements and control of those improvements. And so uh, we did recommend this. This would annex the, just the existing right-of-way, no private land at all, just the existing county road right-of-way, uh, basically for where the current limits in there, which is uh, directly adjacent to the Blakeney development, uh, south and eastward uh, to the what's map 73 parcel 14, which would encompass the, uh, the frontage of the uh, Derby Run development. Uh, Planning Commission did review, the, review this and did recommend approval. Okay. Um, Tim or Mark, anything you want to add to this? I think it speaks for itself. Do I have a motion? I move we approve. Do you have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our second item under our Planning Commission report is consideration of an ordinance amending the text of the Smyrna Municipal Zoning Ordinance relative to Article 2, Section 2.020 definitions. Article 5, Section 5.052.7C-5 Highway Service District Sections 5.053.1I1 Light Industrial District Section 5.053.2I2 Light Industrial District and 5.053.3 I3 Heavy Industrial District and to add um, Article 4, Section 4.200, Supplemental Provisions for Auto Towing Services. This is a first read. Yes, Mayor and Council, you did that very well. Thank you. Uh, there, there's a lot of sections of the ordinance uh, to basically do one thing, which is to uh, remove auto towing services from the C5 District as a special exception review by the Board of Zoning Appeals and to add it as a use allowed by right in the I-1, I-2, and I-3 districts. Um, there are a few other amendments to the definitions section, basically to add that definition of what an auto towing services is, just to differentiate it from a wrecker yard, a wrecking yard, or a junkyard. Um, we also are amending and doing a few changes to those the definitions for automobile wrecking, junk, and salvage yard, and then also, uh, 4.200 is a new section that would be added, uh, and that is basically just so we can codify in the ordinance what our requirements are for screening of an auto towing service uh, lot. Um, the Planning Commission did review this, uh, did recommend approval. Questions for Kevin on this? Existing lots are grandfathered in, correct? Certainly they are, yes. Anything for or Tim to add? Well, I, I think what this does is it uh, provides for any future growth to be in areas where we would not have concerns as far as gateways or major thoroughfares where you might see a, a tow-in lot there and it puts them in er areas where, um, you know, of course, industrial type use and lots of equipment and machinery and other things out there and, and again, off of our major thoroughfares. Any questions for our Planning Commission members or for Kevin? One other thing I'd like to point out is in that move to the industrial zoning, they still would have to comply with the fencing, all the you know uh, uh, barriers and buffers between different properties and those kind of things. But it takes us where we don't have to go to a C5 special 
BZA zoning, we could actually add a tow lot in these certain, as, as Kevin pointed out, in these areas without it have to come to BZA. But there are restrictions that would have to be uh, complied with. So by removing it from the C5, it's no longer allowed in C5? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments? Do we have a motion? I move we approve. And a second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Our last item under Planning Commission report new business is consideration of a donation of right of way as part of the improvements to the Rock Springs Road required as part of the Gwen Farms development. Kevin? Yes, this is a, a mandatory referral uh, that the Planning Commission did review. Uh, as part of the Gwynn Farms development, there are several road improvements required, and as the uh, developer has begun that design of those improvements, uh, they have discovered they need a little bit of right away from an adjoining property owner that they do not own. Um, and so they have uh, negotiated with that property owner, which is uh, Rock Springs Church of Christ. Uh, and they will be providing a compensation to the church for this right of way. Uh, the area to be dedicated as public right of way is 446 square feet. There is a, uh, a five foot wide temporary construction easement. Uh, that is directly adjacent to that right away donation that is would be uh, part of was, would be granted to that developer while they're doing the, the work but that would not be anything that the town would have made uh, or obtain ownership of uh, it would just be the right of way uh, the planning commission did review this and did recommend approval questions for kevin on this anything you all want to add well, I just think this, you know, is going to facilitate the needed uh, improvements to Rock Springs Road, which is will, you know, continue to help with traffic as we grow that area. Uh -huh. I appreciate the church working with them because, oh, yeah. basically, if you, if you read the terms, it's, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a motion? I'll move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. We'll now move on to item B, which is our package liquor board report. There were no applications for the town council to consider at this time. So we will move on to item C, which is approval of the terms of an authorization for the mayor to execute a development agreement with Suncrest real estate and land relative to the road impact fee offsets for the Gwynn Farms development. Kevin? Yeah, this is an offset agreement with Gwynn Farms, the development we were just talking about. As a part of the, uh, that development, there are several off-site improvements, uh, including widening of Rock Springs Road and signalization of the Rock Springs Road and Walden Road intersection. Um, as the developer will not be building any houses, but will be selling lots only, uh, they would not be paying any impact fees. Uh, the the uh, impact <coughs> ordinance does allow for agreements to be made between the town <coughs> and the developer where the builders pay the impact fees and the town then periodically reimburses the developer. Uh, this can be done at basically 70 percent of the improvement costs since our fees are assessed at 70 percent of the maximum fee. Uh, I know Mr. Beach has been working with the developers representation on this agreement. I, I, I'm not, was not a party to a lot of those discussions so I will defer to him as far as the specifics to the agreement but essentially in your packet <coughs> there are is uh, or, or at least I know you have received that uh, final agreement and then also the, uh, the the dollar amounts of all the various improvements that are being done and for the uh, the maximum uh, dollars that would be granted as far as offsets were in there as well so I just Jeff anything you want to add no they were good to work with and uh, Brian and I were able to negotiate what we thought was uh, would protect the town in agreement as we presented this last time, you know, there was one section that we were able to, to find some closure on. And uh, again, they were very receptive to working with us. So. Right. Any questions? Then do we have a motion? I move to approve. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item D is consideration of a resolution to request unclaimed balance of accounts remitted to the state treasurer under Unclaimed Property Act. Rex, how are you tonight? Good, Mayor. You doing all right? I'm good. It's always nice when we're going to be getting money rather than giving it, isn't it? We like that. We do. 
Uh, passing this resolution will allow the town to ask for a refund. This property is made up of outstanding checks and uh, credit balances on closed utility accounts that were held first by the town and secondly by the state. We ask that you approve this resolution. Questions for Rex on this? Do I have a motion? So move. Do I have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? Any idea what the amount may come to? Uh, we don't know what we're asking for, but we know we've got ninety-four thousand plus dollars back in past refunds. You good with that? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, item E is approval of the changes to the Smyrna Police Department towing manual. Mr. Beach? Uh, basically, uh, we have hashed this out uh, numerous times. Uh, and as council knows, uh, after the last workshop, I submitted those changes that the council uh, had requested of removing some of the language that uh, uh, was not required or <coughs> unneeded. Uh, also, uh, the changes will allow for uh, those lots to be up to five miles from the from the town. Um, it also reduces uh, or removes the limit of, of two uh, towing companies, um, and it provides a. a timeline and time period for applications to be on the rotation each year. Other questions for Jeff? He sent it to us. Um, has it been a week? I was trying to remember how long. Late last week. Yes, late last week. And um, I think you've done a good job of incorporating everything that needed to be incorporated. and. Um, any questions or comments? Only question is uh, with the passage, if, if we pass this, then the first uh, period for applications would be this June. This right? June. June 2020. Yes. Right. Okay. Other questions? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay, we are now ready for our boards and committees. Just ask everybody to be patient with us on this. Um, our first one is appointment of one member to the Package Liquor Board to serve a four year term ending in 2024, and these members are appointed by majority vote of the Town Council. We only had one applicant for our uh, package li liquor board, which is Daniel Akpen. And since we only have one spot to fill and one person that applied, um, all in favor of Daniel Akpen serving on the package liquor board say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Congratulations, Daniel. Um, item two, appointment of two members to the Board of Zoning Appeals to serve three-year terms ending 2023. Um, these members are appointed by majority vote of the Town Council. We have had three individuals apply, Scott DeMumbrium, Troy Powell, and Heather McGarry. And um, I will open the floor for nominations. I will nominate uh, Scott DeMumbrium and Troy Powell. They uh had served in the last couple of years and done a really good job, and I would like to see them continue on the board. Okay. Any other nominations? Then I will close the floor to nominations, and since we have only had two nominations and two members, um, Scott DeMumbrian and Troy Powell, all in favor of these two individuals, say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Congratulations, Scott and Troy. They will be serving three-year terms that will end in 2023. Okay, item three is appointment of three members to the Citizens for Sister City Relations Committee to serve three three-year terms ending 2023 and one educator for a secondary school in North Rutherford County to serve an unexpired term ending in 2022. This is nominated by the mayor and confirmed by majority vote of the town council. 
Risha Oliphant, Fran Dunn, Melody Wellshopper, Jonathan Wright, and Reba Gilpin um, have all applied. I will um, nominate Risha Oliphant, Fran Dunn, and Melody Wellshopper to be the three members um, for the Citizens Board to serve three-year terms ending in 2023. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We did not have um, an educator to apply, so if there is an educator from a secondary school in North Rutherford County that is interested in serving on the Sister City Board, we would encourage you to apply. If council or anyone out there knows of someone, please please encourage them to um, get involved. It's a city limit educator, by the way. Um, is it? it is not. Okay. Um, it is not. They do not have to live inside the well, city county. limits. It's just okay. um, they have to be on the North Rutherford County, uh, be in one of the schools on the North Rutherford County. Am I correct, Sherry? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Item four is appointment of two members to the Parks Advisory Board to serve two two-year terms ending 2022 and one non-voting member outside the city to serve a two-year term ending in 2022. These are appointed by the mayor and confirmed by majority vote of the town council. Um, we had Robert Poston, Thomas Williams, Carl Boyd, Daniel Atpan, uh, Charles Skur, and Molly Jennings apply for the um, two members to serve the two-year terms that are uh, residents of the town of Smyrna. I will reappoint Robert Poston and Thomas Williams, and that needs to be confirmed by the town council. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? So Robert and Thomas will be our um, ones inside the town limits. We only had one individual who lives um, outside of the town limits, and that is Jerry Bradley to apply as the um, county resident that is a non-voting member. So I will appoint Jerry Bradley. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Robert, Thomas, and Jerry. Okay, item five is appointment of two members to the Planning Commission to serve two-year terms ending 2022. This is a mayor appointment. We had Mike Allen, Ed Davenport, Charles Skur, Daniel Atkin, and Molly Jennings apply. I will reappoint Mike Allen and Ed Davenport to the Planning Commission. Item six. What? I think it's supposed to be a member. So the document I'm showing shows so that Ed wasn't seeking reappointment. He did. He was say, seeking he did. reappointment. He is. Okay, then it's just wrong. Just wrong in there. Ed was seeking reappointment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. On the thing, I think it says that it didn't show that. Okay. On the computers that we were looking at. Yeah. yeah. And we did um, receive Ed's application. Yeah. Do you have an old one? Because mine's showing yes. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, we will now move on to item six, which is appointment of one member to the project assistance to serve a three-year term ending in 2023. The members are appointed by majority vote of the town council. We have had two individuals apply, Linda McNeil and Barbara Abara, and I will open the floor for nominations. I would recommend that we reappoint Linda McNeil to this uh, body. Any other nominations? I'll close the floor to nominations and only having one nomination and one uh, spot to fill. All in favor of Linda McNeil say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Congratulations, Linda. You will be serving another three-year term ending 2023. Um, item 7 is appointment of one member to the beer board to serve a four-year term ending 2024. We always let people know that there are no tastings on the beer board. They just get to approve applications. So, so why you don't have anybody applying? <laughs> <laughs> so we only had um, one, mem one person apply, and this is appointed by majority vote of the town council. And uh, Daniel Atkin applied, and... Um, 
since we only had one member, all in favor of Daniel, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Daniel. You will um, recall that we did nominate Daniel also to the package liquor board. We try not to have multiple people on multiple boards, but I don't even know the last time the package liquor board met. It's been quite a while. So um, we just wanted to make sure that Daniel was serving on a board that um, actually got to meet. Daniel get all the alcohol boards. There you go. There you go. Um, uh, item eight is appointment of three members to the Stormwater Advisory Committee to serve two two-year terms ending in 2022. These are appointed by majority vote of the Town Council and we had three applications for three spots. Avi Patra, Charles Skurr, and Catherine Green. Since we only had three spots open and had three people apply, all in favor of Avi Patra, Charles Skurr, and Catherine Green signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations. You all are going to be on our Stormwater Advisory Committee. Next we have um, item nine is appointment of one member to the Historic Zoning Commission to serve a five-year term ending in 2025. Um, this is mayor appointment, and we had Heather McGarry and Barbara Abara, and I will appoint Heather McGarry to serve a five-year term ending in 2025. Then we have item 10 is an appointment of three members to the Arts Commission to serve two-year terms ending in 2022. Um, these members are appointed by majority vote of the town council. We actually have three openings and three people apply. Hal Laughlin, <coughs> Pat Whittle, and Yvonne Baines. Since we only have three, all in favor of Hal Laughlin, Pat Whittle, and Yvonne Baines, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations to these three individuals. Item 11 is appointment of one member of the town council to serve a one-year term ending 2021 to the charity assistance board. The member is either the mayor or the mayor's town council designee and serves a one-year term. And Rochelle, would you be willing to do this again? Yes. Great. Thanks. Um, Jeff, do we need to vote on that? Uh, <coughs> yes, mayor. And then after you do that, I got something else I need to ask. To okay. Back on. So um, all in favor of Raquel uh, filling this position, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thanks, Raquel. On item nine, historic zoning, mm -hmm. um, I believe I'm correct. You did uh, appoint the one person that was on there, but it, it should be uh, confirmed by majority vote. Oh, I didn't have counts. that it had to be confirmed. Okay, so it does need to be confirmed? Yes. Okay, so um, I appointed Heather McGarry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes on that one. Item, okay, that was charities. No. Yeah. That was charity assistance. Okay. Thanks for keeping me straight. Item 12 is mayor to appoint one member to the Smyrna Housing Authority to serve a five-year term ending 2025. And this is mayor appointment. And I will, oh, and we had Glenn Fouch and Barbara Abara apply. And I will uh, reappoint Glenn Fouch. Is that confirmation? Because I don't have that as confirmation by council. Um, no, just appointed by Okay. Okay, and item 13 is appointment of one member to the Smyrna Rutherford County Airport Authority to serve a five-year term ending 2025. It's nominated by mayor, confirmed by town council, and we only had one person apply, and that is Mike Woods. So all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mike. Um, we do have one committee that we did not put on here. It is our Memorial Maintenance and Special Projects Subcommittee. Um, for the um, Coos Memorial, and it's nominated by the mayor and confirmed by council. We did put uh, Steve on this as the council member, but we forgot to put on there that we had a um, citizen. We needed one more citizen on that board, and that board is actually going to meet on March the 26th, and we did have one person apply, which who was Kelly Goosetree. And um, if you all will remember, Kelly served on that committee yeah, from the inception. Active, yeah. She actually is. So um, since we had one nomination, I mean, one person apply, then I will um, nominate Kelly Goosetree. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So congratulations to Kelly. Um, let me say this. 
We had a lot of people that applied that are great applicants. We just did not have enough positions to get everybody um, a spot this year. I would encourage you, please, please um, consider getting involved again um, next year. We will have boards at the same time next year. So um, thank you to those that have applied and we look forward to working with those who um, have been appointed. Mayor, can I point out that Charles and, and Bobby both uh, that applied are actually in the audience oh, tonight. Oh, great. And we'd like everybody to recognize that they great. did show up. So and well, congratulations we are glad on to your have nomination. You. And um, I hope that, uh, that you will consider applying again and looking over your application. You were so qualified, and um, we hope you will be involved in the community. So great. Thank you. Um, okay, under other, we have one item, which is approval of the terms of and authorization for the mayor to execute change order number one with Greenway of Nashville, LLC, relative to Zama Park. Mike, how are you tonight? I'm good. How are y'all? Great. Good. I've seen a little work going on down there. Yes, ma'am. I think what you're seeing now is they're kind of forming up the seat walls and the, all the plazas. And uh, I got a call today saying that the people that's installing the trellis and the uh, the shelter down there, we're looking for the anchor bolts, which we have, so maybe they'll get started as well. Uh, this change order uh, has been approved by Reagan Smith. We, they are the engineer of record down there and also the CEI on the project. But we had asked Greenway contractors to quote additional work um, that included uplighting for the trellis and future depot district signage, um, electrical outlets, and additional footer area. So we had asked them to do that. Uh, we did not have the, the design of the, the, the signage and also the lighting uh, just because we weren't sure what, how that signage was going to be. So uh, when they got started, we asked that they give us a quote for that, and uh, that's what you're seeing here. We, uh, we bid this out fairly quick, so some of the, the signage takes a little while to design, and we'll have a sign company probably install that sign or, des and, or fabricate it. Um, so that's why you're seeing the basically infrastructure work for that. We ask that uh, council approve that change order for $15,371. Great. Questions for Mike on this? Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Um, any status reports, Brian? No, ma'am. Announcements? do have a couple of announcements. Okay. Um, if you would, uh, I'm not sure if you'll get it on the screen here, but uh, a couple things just to make you aware of is, again, our Easter Sunday brunch uh, buffet, uh, Sunday, April the 12th at the Smyrna Event Center, uh, 1030 to 2 p.m. Adults are $21.95 inclusive, $12.95 for children 6 to 12 years old, and children under five eat free. Make your reservations by calling 615-459-4444. And this is a great event and it will sell out. So uh, get your reservations in as, pos as early as possible. Uh, another announcement I just wanted to make, uh, two, two personal items. Uh, one, uh, I received a thank you note from uh, Detective Creeb and his family uh, on the passing of his father and the uh, orchid that was sent to the family and they appreciated it very much. Uh, our members of their family during that time of loss. As you all know, uh, this last week has been somewhat uh, treacherous for many of our neighbors uh, with the tornadoes that came through Mount Juliet, Nashville, uh, Putnam County were hit very hard. Uh, we did reach out uh, through TCMA uh, and talk with some of those folks and I'm really happy to announce tonight that uh, during this time, uh, we stepped up to the plate from Smyrna and helped volunteer uh, specifically in uh, Mount Juliet. We had brush trucks and men up there for about a week. Uh, they did not go today. Uh, they, they told us with the rain moving in, they wanted to back off a little bit. Uh, but we've had, uh, I think it was four guys and two trucks and chainsaws up there for a little over a week now. And I'm just very proud of our folks. Also on the gas side, Mike Strange uh, talked with the, uh, the manager of the gas utility over there, as you might well appreciate there's a lot of issues going on with the utilities um, I'm happy to report that our folks went over I think spent a couple of days um, one of the greatest compliments came back uh, they put one of their inspectors with our folks and after about two hours the guy called in and said hey I don't need to be out here these people know what they're doing uh, so that was a great uh, uh, testimony to our people and the training that they received 
And then last but not least, uh, police contact uh, police chief contacted me. Uh, Putnam County, as you know, is hit very hard. Uh, that's where the most substantial amount of damage and the deaths uh, are, are probably being found at this point. And um, the uh, police chief reached out and uh, from here and talked to them. Uh, we had eight of our officers signed up to be willing to go up. We've, I think, at this point sent three. Uh, and what they've done is gone up and give some of those people some relief and, and run the uh, point at night to keep people from getting into some of the areas that were destroyed, keep from looting and those kind of things. Uh, I know Officer uh, Potts and a couple others have been up there and uh, come back with some really tough stories to listen to, uh, the, the loss and suffering that those people have had to endure. So uh, our heart goes out to all of them, but I just wanted to reach out and say how much I appreciate uh, the Town of Smyrna employees not only stepping up to do this work, uh, but did a top-notch job and represented us very well. So thank you to all of you. That's all I have, Mayor. Jeff? I have nothing, Mayor. Raquel? Diane, Diane, did you have anything? Oh, Diane, did you have anything? Raquel? Okay. Um, I'd just like to follow up uh, with what Brian said and extend my thoughts and prayers to the uh, to our neighbors in Davidson, Wilson, and Putnam and encourage anyone who has time if they can go out and volunteer or provide baskets or items to help those families. This is not something that's going to be uh, ending soon and so they're going to need our um, our continued thoughts, our continued help, helping hands and volunteerism to get through this period because it's going it, to, it's not something that's going to be an immediate uh, fix. So I just encourage all of our citizens and neighbors to get out and help them. Um, and then I would also, at this point, I want to say congratulations to my son, Gabriel Peebles Ross. He competed in the uh, state tournament men's gymnastics this weekend and he placed first in the level five, 11 and up all around for men's gymnastics. So I'd like to say congratulations to him for that. That's it. Well, congratulations to Gabe for exactly. one thing. But um, heartfelt, heartfelt prayers for all those affected by the tornado. And other than that, I don't have anything, ma'am. Yeah, I would also like to echo the uh, thoughts and, and prayers. You know, I've had several clients that were affected, and, you know, fortunately nobody was injured, but just the devastation from property and trying to figure out how you rebuild and where you start and go from there it's been it's been pretty traumatic so I uh, would like to extend my personal thoughts and prayers Great. Jerry yeah I echo what they're saying uh, my prayers and my thoughts have been with that uh, those communities and uh, continue to be and uh, just uh, I guess we were blessed that we weren't had to go through that but uh, uh, we, uh, I appreciate those that have gone and helped and continue to go help and um, uh, will continue to be uh, in my thoughts and prayers as well. Steve? Um, not much more I could add to that. I mean, obviously, um, all of our hearts and prayers are <coughs> with all the folks that have been impacted and, and even the, the peripheral folks that maybe not directly impacted or you don't obviously see, but they're still impacted. Um, Chief and Mike and uh, Public Works, not just the folks that went to help, but that's a drain on your department when you send three guys from here to there, you've got to cover that shift. So not just the three that went or the, the guys that went over for gas, but the, the rest of the department, um, I, I appreciate them stepping up and covering the holes there. So um, that's it. A lot of reasons to be proud to be in the volunteer state, isn't it? Um, it's, it's showing its true spirit right now, and, and uh, we all feel for our, our neighbors that have been uh, affected by this, and everybody up here shared their same sentiments, and I do too. Same to the town, our employees that went to help, and those, as Steve mentioned, that stayed here and picked up the slack. Um, there's a lot of companies uh, to be aware of out there that are trying to make a, a scoop off of this storm, uh, but there are also a lot of companies doing a lot of good work. So uh, I know a company I work for, I'm very proud of. They've got a disaster relief thing going on now. And so uh, it's everywhere. So you see the, the spirit of community, and that's, that's pretty cool. Um, we did do a little ribbon cutting last week, some of us, and we went over to Gorgeous Chicken. Spencer and Nikki over there uh, served some really good chicken. 
So if you're interested in that, it's over there behind, kind of in the Toots Plaza behind U.S. Bank over there. And uh, they were great hosts, and we appreciate that. Um, we lost a, a community member of ours this, this week, Jean Coop. Uh, passed away, and uh, Jean is known for her volunteer spirit. <coughs> she was with the Red Cross for a lot of years and did a lot of great work in the community, so just want to extend my condolences to the whole Coop family. Mr. Ben, uh, he's going to be lost for a little while without Jean, and, and so uh, uh, kind of feel for him right now. Love those people. And uh, Brian, thank you, because I know with these storms and everything going on this week, uh, you've been staying pretty busy. And I know with updates that you give us, with everything else going on, you throw that on top of it. I just want to say thank you for, for what you do. That's all I have. Great. A um, couple of items. Um, first of all, we would like to invite everybody out to Cedar Stone Community Park Ribbon Cutting. The ceremony will be Tuesday, March the 24th at 4 o'clock. And um, this is not been photoshopped. This is actually what our new park looks like. And I will tell you, I am really excited. Brian and I got to go out yesterday. Yesterday. I was trying to remember if it was yesterday or the day before. Got to go out yesterday and do a little tour. I think um, you all are going to be really proud of this park and proud that it's in our community. And, I think people will be coming from lots of different places to hopefully get an opportunity to play on these fields. And I've heard a lot of people that are ready for that playground to be open. So um, March the 24th, 4 p.m. there at Cedar Stone Park, we will be doing the ribbon cutting. We'll also be doing the field dedications um, to Frank E. Crosland Jr., Jenny Olerud Williams, H.G. Cole, and Kenneth Coon Victory, who are um, who were our uh, past commissioners of Parks and Recreation. So we're looking forward to that as well. Don't forget the Smyrna Fire and Police Department annual Easter egg hunt will be Saturday, April the 4th at 1 p.m. at Lee Victory Recreation Park football fields. Don't forget to bring your own basket. And the Easter Bunny will be on hand for pictures. Our rain date will be Saturday, April the 20th, and it's sponsored by Smyrna Natural Gas Department. And we're going to work really hard this year for waiting on the 3, 2, 1 before everybody takes off. Last year we had some that got a little overexcited and started a little early. And let me just tell you, once they go, it's it ain't any stopping them. Like I mean, it right? is. And I mean, the thing is, it's like a vacuum cleaner out there. I mean, you see candy everywhere, and when you leave, it is clean. About three minutes top. Uh, it is. Yeah, that's that's a, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, don't so be later. Don't be You'll late. miss this event. That's exactly right. Um, next, our summer camp registration is now open for members and will open for everyone on. It's already open because March the 9th has already passed, right? Yes. That's great. Yes. So it's open for everyone as of now, and it's $75 for half-day camp and $125 for our full-day camps. And you can contact Shelly Denton at townofsmyrna.org if you have questions. Our 2020 Top Gun Night Run is scheduled for Friday, May 29th at 8 p.m. Registration is now open at townofsmyrna.org slash Top Gun Night Run. Um, sponsorship opportunities are available. Um, anything from 1000 and below we still have available. Mike Moss, how many do we have registered? I did not check today, but it was, you know, in trouble. Uh, last I heard it was 95, so it might be 95. So 95, so hopefully we're more than 95 as of now. I will tell you, it will sell out, so if you are wanting to participate in the Top Gun Night Run, then you need to get signed up. You do not have to be a professional runner to run this. It is definitely family friendly and we encourage anyone to come out and participate. Um, a couple of items. I was lucky enough to get to read at Life Point Church to the preschoolers there. It was a lot of fun. You all know how much I enjoy getting back out into the classroom. So thank you to Life Point for allowing me to come out and read. Um, we talked about Cedar Stone. Um, last night I also got to be a part of the Mayor's Cup for soccer between Stewart's Creek and Smyrna High School and got to go out for the coin toss and then got to um, uh, give out the trophy at the end and I will say that Smyrna High School won third year in a row 
and um, it was really exciting. I called HG afterwards. I said, I don't know if it's called overtime. I don't know if it's called, what else? I said, it's overtime, time. it's extra time. I didn't know what soccer called their overtime. And so it came down to five kicks by each team. And so it was pretty exciting there at the end for someone who doesn't understand a lot about soccer. Um, you should get with the program. I should get with the program, you're right. I probably need to get you to give me lessons. <laughs> Worked out about as good as your golf game, HG. But that's a little bit better than yeah. my soccer. I've been so. talking to Hal for years Wait, about golf that. golf is better than your soccer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hal, tell him I'm good at golf. Where's Hal? Oh, here. see, mm, Hal would tell you He knew not to be here tonight, golf. didn't he? <laughs> He'd um, have had to lie. That's what he did. <laughs> Um, got to attend the governor's address today um, with the Nashville Chamber of Commerce and um, uh, he spoke a little bit about the storms. He also spoke about the coronavirus and um, did a really great job. Um, also attended um, the mayor's caucus, met with me members today on the Hill about initiatives we have through our Middle Tennessee Mayor's Caucus, and there's about 70 mayors that are involved. There were probably 10 of us on the Hill today. Our major push was about transportation and the need for transportation. It is not just a Nashville issue. It is a regional problem that we um, are all going to have to be involved in. Um, so had quite a few discussions today. You want to mention Carpe? Yes, and I've got just a couple other things first. Um, spoke with Mayor Cooper today. He was at the governor's address at breakfast this morning. Passed on um, what a great job I thought that he individually did and also what the city of Nashville did. Um, I can't imagine trying to deal with everything they had to deal with um, in the last couple of days. Also spot, spoke to Mayor Hutto um, by text, who is the Wilson County Mayor. I don't know if you got to see him in the press conference, um, but to have two schools gone and um, trying to decide what to do with those kids for the rest of the school year, I think they have stepped up and done a great job. So. I just wanted to let both of them know that um, that our thoughts were with them. I do not know the Putnam County Mayor. I would have gotten in touch with him as well. Um, attended an emergency meeting with um, on Monday about the coronavirus. And the one thing that we want you all to know is there is no need to panic. And um, we had members from the school board there, the medical examiner was there, um, both uh, administrators from the hospital were there, EMS was there, all of the mayors were there, and there are protocols in place. And we continue to put um, uh, everything that we are being told through the health department out to share with you all. And there is a 1-800 number that the health department has put out that will answer questions and give you correct information. Just because it's on Facebook doesn't mean that it's always true. So um, we encourage you to um, stay updated with the Town of Smyrna site because Kathy's done a great job of putting information out there that is accurate information. Um, Thursday is the Carpe is um, opening a new site, which is, I call it the old Pepperoni's Playhouse. If you've been here a while, that's probably how you know it. It's over on Hazelwood, um, there behind Wal Walgreens. Is it Walgreens or CVS? It's Walgreens. It's Walgreens on that, Walgreens on that side. So 4.30 on tomorrow? No. Thursday. Thursday. 4.30 on Thursday and, um, Will be their ribbon cutting and we encourage you all to come out and um, be a part of that and see what all they've got going on. Two personal items. Tomorrow Parker will be 23 so I wanted to wish Parker a happy birthday and on Sunday Britt will be 50. So Ooh. happy birthday to Britt as well. So um, two pretty important guys in my life and I just wanted to wish them both happy birthday. Anything else tonight? Mayor, did you say on Carpe, did you say 4.30 or 4? Four? It's 4 is what I have. Oh, is it 4? Okay, yes. sorry. 4 o'clock on Thursday. Thank you for correcting me there, Jerry. Anything else? If nothing else, we are adjourned.